and you in particular, your free throws have gone up every year. I think you're up around eight and a half or nine a game. I think this year, last I looked, has that been something you've been consciously trying to add to your game? And have you seen that really have positive impacts as you've gone along? Yeah, uh, you know, like I um, said, I've worked on my body a lot this summer um, and physically just feel a lot better. So, um, you know, reading the game as well as just being able to attack the basket, uh, you know, much more physical than, you know, past years. Um, to kind of gain an advantage and, you know, get the contact. Jason Tatum is a superstar. Now, obviously for you guys, that, that's a duh statement right there. Emster, what does that mean? Why does it matter? Well, Jason Tatum was somebody I had more so at the 10 or 9 range coming into this year. And I'm, what I wanted from him was very simple. Jason Tatum has the frame and the build to be much more assertive and aggressive at the rim and get to the line. And this season, he has done nothing but what I needed him to do. So right now, Jason Tatum is currently shooting 81% at the rim, which is a 9% increase from the year before at 72%. And then from 3 to 9 feet, he's currently shooting 47%, which last year he only shot 40. And right now, Tatum is, take, is taking advantage of his size to get to the line, as currently he's attempting 9 free throws a game, which is a career high by a long shot. Last year, he had only attempted six. And right now, we can see that from Tatum averaging 32, getting to the line more is obviously going to help his scoring. Now, Jason Tatum is a top five player in the NBA, at least right now. So go ahead, guys, like and subscribe, and let's get into the film breakdown to show us why Jason Tatum is playing like a top five player right now. And in this first clip here, we're going to see the Celtics against the Cavaliers in which Tatum is in the corner guarded by Dean Wade and goes for a cut and immediately puts his hand out, as you guys see right here, calling for the ball to then again get a strong finish at the rim. This clip here, we're going to see a screen set for Tatum that he uses to shoot, miss, and immediately get the rebound. But notice the Cavaliers defense has struggled to set back. Donovan Mitchell's feet aren't planted, so now he's stuck trying to get up to Tatum. And Tatum right here, instead of doing what he normally would do, goes for the strong finish instead of trying to draw contact for a foul. This shows Tatum's increase at finishing and how this is helping elevate his play to a top five player. And right here off the double screen, yet again, Tatum steps on the gas and goes to try and take advantage of having a one-on-one -on -one with Karis LeVert at the rim. And again, instead of trying to draw a foul, goes for a strong layup, showing a change in mindset and play from Tatum that's been needed. And right here, you see you see some nice playmaking from Tatum, kicking it out to Brown. And what Brown does here is even better because Tatum is wide open in this corner as he's got the man jumping and you got three men on the inside. Kicks it out to Tatum, wide open, who obviously is going to knock down the three. And in this clip right here against the Memphis Grizzlies, we see Tatum take advantage of Dylan Brooks, who obviously hasn't been set up. And you have the rest of the Grizzlies defense here with Brandon Clark, Desmond Bain, and John Morant more so just looking forward and Tatum takes full advantage going at a full burst of speed cutting to the rim for an incredible alley-oop dunk and coming up here in this clip we see Marcus Smart get the ball to Tatum in which now to Brown who's obviously showing the body language of let me shoot this shot is going to make the defender here kind of question whether or not to go help against Tatum which gets him ties Jones and another man in a one-on-one -on -one, and which again here notice Tatum's arms he very easily last year's Tatum probably would have threw his arms out to the left try and draw a foul and get to the line but instead goes for a strong finish now in this clip here we see Jalen Brown bringing the ball up the court and where he's going to kick it and we look at Jason Tatum right here who goes to help Smart already as all of the Grizzlies are focused on Smart in his layup attempt, which again allows for Jason Tatum to show his improvement at the rim for an incredible finish. And in this play up here, we see the screen set for Tatum in which he takes advantage right here of the, the current defensive setup with a wide open cut to the lane in which he basically just has a one-on-one -on -one with Michael Porter Jr. as the defense isn't able to keep up with him for an easy layup. And now we're going to see Jason Tatum's threat as a scorer really help him out along with his pet, uh, threat of playmaking. As he cuts here to the rim, DeAndre Jordan clearly struggles to make a decision. Does he go and move in to try and stop Tatum? Or does he try and stop the bounce pass from possibly happening? And Tatum goes for an incredible floater instead and gets a nice finish. Now this clip here, we're going to Tatum do something incredible. He goes for the cut. And right here. 
And right here, he's able to take advantage of the defense, basically having a wide open lane as the Nuggets defense isn't able to keep up for another great finish. And right here, we're going to see Jason Tatum's playmaking as another great reason for why he's top five. Right here, he gets the cut, and almost four to five of the Knicks defense all goes to commit to Tatum, leaving Vonley wide open in the corner for an easy knockdown corner three. Upcoming play here against the Heat, we're going to see Jason Tatum take advantage of the Al Horford screen and the Jalen Brown double screen to now take a look at the three to four defenders who are looking again in the direction of Tatum due to his scoring gravity, who kicks it out to Derek White again for another easy corner three. Now in this play here, we're gonna see a shot attempt miss in which the Celtics get to lay up and kick it out to Tatum, who then takes advantage of this little step back he's about to do because he gets the second defender to then try and commit to stopping him, who leaves Grant Williams open for an easy corner three. Now we're gonna look at why Jason Tatum's defense as it already improved majorly last year, only seems to be getting better. On this play here, we see Josh Giddy has only 1.3 seconds left on the shot clock to put something up. Tatum perfectly anticipates the shot to go and reach it and get a nice block to go and try and get the dunk. Now on this next play here against the Cavaliers, Jason Tatum read, reads the offense perfectly here as he's already preparing to go and meet Kevin Love, who's cutting to the rim, and gets an incredible block here without getting any fouls, showing an increase in discipline and overall defensive awareness. Now, on this final play against the Cavaliers, Jason Tatum makes the block to save the game as he goes and perfectly matches Donovan Mitchell's shot release to go and get the block to tie the game. Jason Tatum throughout these clips have shown you guys that there's a very obvious increase in skill his finishing ability has only gotten better his defense is only showing to continue to improve and even if you don't think so it's staying at a level that is better than most players in this league and his playmaking has shown to make some form of an increase as he's finally starting to take advantage of his scoring gravity to try and help create for others all of these factors combined with the numbers and just the overall increase in play shows why Jason Tatum should be considered a top five player in the league, at least right now. And again, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see. Do you agree or disagree? And where do you want this community to continue to grow? Thank you all. This is Emster Nose Hoops. Have a good one.